This is a valve preamp, and whilst I'm not a great lover of valves, for reasons we won't go into now, I thought this was cheap enough at $16.45 New Zealand to experiment with it and see actually if it's any good or not. Now, theoretically, this shouldn't be any good because the valve it uses is a Chinese special and is actually um, an RF valve. It's not meant for audio at all, so by rights it should be not very good performance. But anyway, I've built it and um, I'm going to show it to you. This is the circuit and the top half here is basically the amplifier. And it's a, although it's shown as a triode there, it is in fact a pentode and I suspect it's connected as a triode uh, because the valve is definitely a pentode. Now, you can't get much simpler than what you've got here. Um, it's basically volume control and a bit of bias and an undecoupled cathode resistor. Now if you did want a bit more gain out of this, which I don't think you would, you can always put a capacitor of about 50 microfarad across the cathode resistor there and that will increase the gain, but it will do it at the expense of quality because without a bypass capacitor on there you will get a degree of negative feedback, um, which goes a long way to smoothing the response and reducing noise, but at the expense of gain. Rather large capacitors coupling one microfarad, and you would normally expect to find about 0.1 or even 0.01 across there. Now, one thing I have found with this, which I'll explain later, it doesn't like a lowish impedance. You can see here there's a, as a, as a loading resistor of 100K. Well, into the amplifier project, it actually feeds at the moment into a 10K pot. And 10K across there, it does not like. Uh, the bass rolls off dramatically below 100 hertz. And that's purely because it's a low impedance. Once I've got the correct potentiometer of 50K, I will probably remove that resistor and just put the 50k pot across it. But certainly, when you load it with a high impedance, you'll see the results are actually quite good. Now, this here is the power supply and is obviously 90% of the works because you feed in 12 volts AC here and a voltage doubling circuit for both positive and negative gives you a plus and minus. 28 volts. Now, some people would say valves don't like such a low voltage, but you have in fact got um, 50, 18, 56 volts across that tube or valve, I prefer to call it a valve, um, which doesn't sound a lot when you consider say a 3 watt amplifier with an EL84 or something like that would, would probably have 300 volts on it. But bearing in mind this is a low signal, I doubt whether the, 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 the valve is passing more than 2 or 3 milliamps because it's giving a gain of probably about 10, which is not a lot. So you don't actually need a, a wide voltage swing. So that voltage is actually fine because if you look at some say hi-fi amplifiers where the first valve is say an EF86 or an ECC83 the anode voltage on that was, is probably going to be quite a bit less than 100 volts because you're dealing with small signals it's only when you start getting um, this is basically a voltage amp well all valves are voltage amplifiers really but this is purely voltage it, it isn't delivering any current at all that's a look at the PCB and the top side. All is clear. Now, if you can see my pointer there, it's pointing to the center of the valve base. Now, for some strange reason, they supply in with that two blue LEDs. 
Now, why you possibly want a valve to glow blue, I had no idea. But I haven't fitted those two LEDs because the valve should glow red, and it does. But why on earth you should want blue, I mean, it's just, oh well. It's there for those that like it, so let's leave it at that. That's what the valves look like, and yes, mine did have all wonky pins like that. Uh, I don't know why they should be all wonky like that, because they were wrapped in uh, bubble wrap, um, and I think that's probably just how they were made, and mine don't have any writing on them at all. This is what it looks like assembled, and it's simply a case of input here, output here, AC volts here, and an on-off, and it does actually have a, I should say it's a, a potentiometer for the volume, and it also has a click switch to turn the thing off. Here's a nice picture for those of you that like to see valves glowing. In use, by the way, it gets moderately warm, the valves, but I think it's predominantly due to the heaters and not because of the huge current that's flowing. I haven't measured it, but I doubt if it's more than a milliamp or two. Now, let's do some figures and get the scope working. We're looking here at square waves. The yellow trace at the top is the output from the amplifier and this is purely, we're talking about the amplifier now, not the valve preamp or anything like that. And that's outputting the equivalent of about 50 watts, although it's hard to calculate. Well, for me it is anyway, because it's a square wave and not a sine wave. Those that are smarter than me can probably do it. But um, anyway, the yellow trace is the output from the amplifier putting out approximately 50 watts across 8 ohms. And the reason I'm showing you the lower trace is because that is the square wave from the generator. Now, because I'm not a millionaire and I can't afford, I'm only a poor pensioner, I'm using a fairly mediocre square wave generator and the blue trace is the output directly from the generator. So the bottom is the original and the top trace is from the output of the amplifier suitably attenuated so it looks the same. Now that's one kilohertz. Um, no, it's not, I beg your pardon. It's 2.98 kilohertz. Um, it doesn't matter, it just looks the same at, at one kilohertz. Um, so we're going to up the frequency and we'll go up to 10 kilohertz which is about well that's 11 kilohertz and alter the time base the right way and you can see you're just beginning to get a little bit of a slope here ignore the noise because that's digital oscilloscopes for you that's just the way they look that, that there isn't noise there in reality. So if I superimpose the two traces, it's very hard to do this with a camera in front of you. You can actually see the difference and that's obviously frequency restrictions because if we go back to 1K 3k as that's as near as I can get without changing the range you can see the difference is quite minimal there I haven't quite got it right but the rise time is pretty good this is only a preliminary of doing this, by the way, because um, I propose to do it later on with some numbers thrown in. So let's up the frequency a lot. Is a very, very unfair test. 
you can see even the original at the bottom doesn't look that hot but that's 87 kilohertz you tried doing that with a valve amplifier <laughs> one last test now this comes under the heading of stupidity but I'm going to show it to you anyway what you can see on the scope at the moment um, is just over 10 kilohertz and I'm going to wind it up and I'll leave the time base where it is but you will see where it starts to whoop, going the wrong way where it starts to roll off that's 25 kilohertz that's 40 kilohertz and it's just starting to roll now that's 63 kilohertz and that's actually running at 50 let me just check that's actually 50 watts in across 8 ohms and the amplifier is getting nice and toasty so is my heat sink um, probably not recommended to do this but well let's just see go up a bit more that's 83 kilohertz and the signals drop by about 10 percent and on this range that's as high as I can go so not bad is it really uh, producing that sort of power it will go higher but I, I think I will cook my heat sink if I cook it if I play it any higher that's 87 kilohertz and it's flat absolutely flat 34 kilohertz not half a db down but flat this is the square wave at the same as we were testing before at just under 3 kilohertz um, not too bad this is 10 kilohertz square wave now I don't know where that sort of modulations coming from but um, it's coming out of the valve preamp not quite sure what that is whether it's because I've got so many wires hooked all over the bench who knows right we're going to have a look at its low frequency response there's our reference as before and we'll start the sweep at 10 Hertz hopefully the time base will be correct so you can see it it's quite a bit down there and we're now 20 Hertz it's pretty flat from about 35 40 Hertz still a little bit down but nothing tremendous yeah I think if we can say it's flat from 40 Hertz to 20k that will be fairly conservative not bad performance at all really but I have found this is the output from the valve preamp um, when feeding into the amplifier I get quite a bit of bass roll off and that's because I'm feeding it into a 10k impedance which it does not like at all so there we go once again it's it's got a reasonable output right down to 10 Hertz and it's pretty well flat from 35 Hertz which again is I think pretty good performance I'm still waiting for the Alps potentiometer but expected very any time at all uh, to sum up on the valve amplifier um, I'm not a great lover of valves to be honest there's too many things that will influence the sound not on this project but a valve amplifier all that iron and transformers and harm and 
intermodulation distortion, low frequency response, high distortion. You may have guessed that I'm not really a great lover of valve amplifiers. They were good in their day, but things have moved on. And I hope to move on very shortly as well, because one of the projects that's coming up is a directly coupled um, DC preamp which uses quite an old chip but one I used to play with as a as a young lad um, but it still performs extremely well and I'm hoping for great things for this this is an old project which should be along in the next week or two so I should build that and I'm hoping the performance is going to be as good as the amplifier because that amplifier is very good. Um, if you've understood some of the tests that I've done, you will know that to be to be true. There aren't many amplifiers that can produce 80 kilohertz at um, any power, let alone 50 watts. And if I was braver, I would put that up to clipping. But um, hmm. I don't like smoke in the room. It's not not good it should do it there's no reason why it shouldn't but I'm not brave enough to do it I bought these things with my money <laughs> no one's sponsoring me if it blows up I've got to go out and fork out another one anyway I appreciate you following this series and hopefully I've got some more interesting things to show you the DC coupled preamp I'm looking forward to that personally